we are connecting. Okay. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the virtual college exploration presented by StriveScan and the New Jersey Association for College Admissions Counseling. I'm going to do some housekeeping items and then I am going to turn you over so you can learn about some great places in Maryland that you might like to study. For housekeeping items, if you want to ask questions, you're going to use the question and answer panel. Type in your question and one of our panelists will get to you. If they don't get to you, they will get back to you at some point after the presentation. You are muted and your videos are off. That's by design so that you pay attention to the panelists and we don't try to talk over one another. This session is being recorded, so you will be able to access it later. You will also be able to access any of the other presentations and there's 185 that you can choose from at any point. And I think I will turn it over to the panelists now, if one of you would like to start and I will pop off into cyberspace. Awesome, thank you so much and welcome everyone. We're so excited to have you here today. Um, so I'll go ahead and briefly introduce myself and then let my colleagues introduce themselves while I'm sharing the presentation. So first of all, my name is Rachel McCauley. I am one of the admissions counselors at UMBC, which is in Baltimore, Maryland. And then I'm gonna pass it off to my colleague, Micah. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Micah Yarbrough, and I'm an admissions counselor um, at Towson University in Towson, Maryland, and I recruit for Central and Northern New Jersey. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining. My name is Megumi Gomio. I am a senior admissions counselor at Stevenson University, and I work with students from Northern and Central New Jersey. Hi guys, my name is Colin. I'm the admissions counselor for Salisbury University um, and I recruit for the entire state of New Jersey. Yay, that is all of us. So we are just four of many schools in Maryland and we're so excited to share our various universities with you all today. So let's get started. So we're going to start with myself, UMBC, that is University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Hopefully you all have been to the Baltimore area before and have seen the inner harbor of Baltimore with our, our aquarium and various other museums and awesome restaurants. But UMBC is a medium sized public university just outside of Baltimore City. Our colors are black and gold. We are the Chesapeake Bay Retrievers, similar to a golden retriever, friendly, loves community and very loyal but has a little bit of grit and toughness to us as well. So very similar to a Chesapeake Bay Retriever. Our location, depending on where you're coming from, from New Jersey, can be anywhere between two to four hours. So if you're in Northern Jersey, all the way at the top of the state, it can be almost four hours. But if you're a little bit on the Southern side of the state, it can take just two hours. So not too close, not too far away. Our undergraduate size is about 11,000 undergraduate students. So really awesome medium size where you can walk around campus, see familiar faces, but you're never gonna know everyone. It also makes our class sizes just about 19 students on average. So we have a student faculty ratio of 19 to one. We also have 61 majors and 55 distinct programs. 70 minors and 36 certificate programs. So lots of study at UMBC. We are very passionate about research in all of our 61 majors and all of our programs. So a lot of hands-on opportunities in those smaller classrooms. And those majors can vary from the STEM majors, the arts and humanities and social sciences. We also have 17 Division I NCAA sports teams at UMBC, along with tons of club sports and various performance groups and service clubs and organizations. But a fun fact about our 17 Division I teams, our Division I basketball team made history in 2018. We had one of the biggest wins in men's basketball history, being a 16 seed, beating a number one seed. Um, and other fun facts about us, we were ranked number nine among the nation's most innovative schools in the 2020 US News and World Report for the best colleges. So that means that we have some really awesome classrooms, really awesome professors, and innovative ways to collaborate with our students 
and our coursework. So UMBC, great diverse community of students and hopefully we will be learning more about that soon. Thank you. So I'm gonna talk about Towson University. We are located in Towson, Maryland. Um, just like Rachel, we're not too far from Baltimore City. We're about two to four hours from New Jersey. I know it says three, but if you're at the Southern, in Southern New Jersey, like Rachel mentioned, we're about maybe two or two and a half hours. Our colors are also black and gold. Our mascot is Dr. Tiger. Our undergraduate size is around 19,000 students. We're a medium to large school and our average class size is about 24. Um, we have 60 different majors and 65 different minors for you to choose from. Some of our popular majors include business administration, biology, psychology, nursing, exercise science. So a lot of great things for you to choose from. We have 19 division one teams. Um, a fun fact about Towson is that the Netflix series, The Haunting Hill House was actually created by Dan Kaplow who graduated from Towson University. So I'm going to talk about Salisbury University. Um, we're the only school on the Eastern Shore of Maryland, um, unlike my three colleagues. Um, so we're about two and a half hours to four hours away, depending on where you are in New Jersey. Um, we're about a half hour from Ocean City, Maryland. So if you've been to the Ocean City area before, um, you've probably either passed through Salisbury or not that far from Salisbury. Um, we are maroon and gold, and our mascot is Sammy the Seagull. Um, with just around 8,000 undergraduate students, um, we're a medium-sized school, not too big and not too small at the same time. Our average class size is 24 students with a 15 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Um, we have 46 majors and 73 minors. Um, most popular majors include business, nursing, um, biology is the biggest major on campus, um, education and communications. Um, we have 21 Division three teams. A little fun fact about our Division three teams. Um, um, one of our SU alums, um, Dan Quinn of the Atlanta Falcons, is a Salisbury alum and poured a lot of money into a brand new football stadium on campus. Um, and a little, another little fun fact about the school is that uh, our library, um, which is pictured on the screen here, um, was named one of Princeton Review's top 20 in the uh, nation. And it's beautiful and it's my favorite place on campus. All right, so now it's my turn. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Stevenson. Um, so we are located in Owings Mills, Maryland in Baltimore County. So from New Jersey, that's roughly anywhere from two to three and a half, maybe four hours, depending on traffic. Um, our school colors are green and white and our mascot is Wild Saying the Mustang, so he's pictured there. Um, we are considered a small university. Our undergraduate enrollment hovers around 2,700. So that makes for smaller average class sizes. About 17 students is what we see. Um, so this is great because it may be similar or even smaller than the classes you're in right now in high school. So your professors are going to get to know you and they're going to get to know you as individuals and be invested um, in seeing you succeed and do well. Um, we have over 90 different majors, minors, and pre-professional tracks to choose from. Um, so our most popular majors include our direct entry nursing program, biology, business administration, criminal justice, and our deciding program, which is for students who are not yet decided in what they want to major in. Um, every major is going to require some sort of hands-on learning experience, like be an internship, research, a capstone, something that's going to get you um, developing those essential career skills for whatever it is that you want to pursue. Um, we have 27 Division III um, teams to choose from, including beach volleyball and men's and women's ice hockey. Um, but if you want to stay involved in athletics, but you don't want to go to the varsity level, um, we also have club and intramural sports. And then a fun fact about us is that we were named a best value school for 2020 um, and again for 2021. So it's very exciting. So now that you've learned a little bit about each of our different institutions, we're going to examine a few different reasons why you should keep Maryland in mind when you are exploring your college options. So as you can see on this map, um, the three schools, Stevenson, Towson, and UMBC are all relatively close to each other. And then we have Salisbury here on the Eastern Shore of Maryland. Um, both myself and Meg are from New Jersey. And we are, uh, I went to Salisbury. I believe Meg went to uh, UMBC, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so we're both alums of uh, Maryland schools. 
And from my experience, I went to a Maryland school because for me, it wasn't too far away from home, but also uh, not too close at the same time. My parents had to make a day trip to come down and see me. Um, so it wasn't like they can just drive down on, on a such short notice to just come and drop in on, drop in on me. Um, I also loved uh, the Maryland weather down here. Um, it's warmer than New Jersey generally. In my experience, uh, there's not as much snow down here either, which is a big plus because I don't like snow. Um, and we're also, there's so much to do in Maryland and we're gonna talk more about that as well as we keep on going. And so I'll talk a little bit about my experience also being from New Jersey. Uh, so I grew up in Bergen County, so all the way um, in the Northeast corner of the state. Um, and I wanted to go to Maryland because it was far enough away but not too far, like, like Colin said, so my parents could you know, make a day trip to come see me. I also had family in the area, so I was a little bit familiar, but I chose to stay in Maryland after I graduated um, because I enjoyed my time here so much. There's a lot of things to do, like just for fun, but also in terms of opportunities for professional development. Um, so I've really enjoyed my time being here and there's lots of opportunities to take advantage of, and it is overall like a really great place to live. So I'm going to talk about the internship and job opportunities that are in Maryland. Going to school in Maryland provides students with a lot of options for internships and careers, whether you're a business major, an art major, political science major, there are ways for you to grow professionally, which you can see some of on the screen. In the top left, you'll see the Capitol Building, which is in Washington, D.C. So that's a place where students can explore different political science, internships, or majors in other companies and organizations. In the bottom left, you'll see Under Armour, which is located in Baltimore. You'll see Northrop Grumman in the middle. On the right, you'll see the African American Museum in DC. So students that are interested maybe in the art major or if they wanna work in the museum, they have internship opportunities available there as well. In the top right, You'll see the Maryland General Assembly, which is located in Annapolis, so another place for political science majors or any um, students that are interested in that field. And then in the middle, you'll see MGM, which is in the National Harbor. So there, is, there are a lot of opportunities for you to get that out of the classroom experience and apply what you're learning in the classroom to the real world, regardless of what major you're interested in and regardless of what part of Maryland you're in. Yes, yeah, so like Micah said, there are tons and tons of job opportunities, internship opportunities all throughout Maryland and in DC, Virginia, and even some places in Pennsylvania. Maryland has that benefit, we're a small state. So even if you have a job that's out of state, it's still drivable depending on where you are. So these are a couple more job opportunities listed on the screen that are scattered throughout Maryland. So T. Rove Price, right in the city of Baltimore, Marriott scattered throughout Maryland as a whole, Johns Hopkins Medicine also in Baltimore, and they have locations in DC as well where students can work. Columbia, Maryland. Um, we all have such great locations where we can easily access these job opportunities and internships. And the great thing about all four of our schools is that we each have career centers on campus. So even as soon as your freshman year, if you're trying to explore what kind of internships and jobs that you might want to have later on in your college career or even after you graduate, we all have those resources on campus that can help you to find the perfect career path for you. I know when I was a freshman, I was completely lost in what exactly I wanted to do. So using our career center really helped me to find my way and find my goals in life. And I know it can do the same for you too. So that's definitely a huge benefit about each of our campuses. All right, so we all know that environment and setting can play a major role in your college search process, whether you're looking to be in a city setting or maybe a little bit further away from the city or even in a rural sort of setting. Uh, no matter the environment that you're looking for, we're confident that you can find it in Maryland. We have a very sort of diverse environment all across the state. Um, so if you're looking to be minutes from a city setting or even right inside the city itself, you can consider Baltimore or um, being near Annapolis or Washington, D.C. Our state's public transit system makes it super easy to get around both in the city itself and also into more suburban areas. Um, so for example, I know at Stevenson, we're about 10 minutes away from a metro stop um, and we run a shuttle service that gets out there um, to make it easy for you to get into the city. Um, and then, like I said, Annapolis is another city you can consider. Um, it's our state's capital. 
Um, it's pictured in the bottom right corner, so you can see there's lots of historic buildings and waterfront views to explore. Um, there's also countless different picturesque and more like secluded uh, nature areas to explore. Um, so for example, Patapsco Valley State Park, which is that middle top picture, um, has over 14,000 acres of land to explore with hiking trails and waterfalls. Um, personally, it's one of my favorite places to go like on the weekends. Um, and then in Western Maryland, you can explore um, Deep Creek Lake, which is in the bottom middle, um, which offers year round fun like skiing, fishing, tubing and kayaking. Um, and then if you want to be closer to the beach, you need to keep the Eastern Shore in mind. Um, like Colin mentioned, Ocean City is um, one of the beaches on the Eastern Shore. It's probably our state's most popular beach, um, but there are countless others that you can um, take a look at along the Eastern Shore. Um, and then personally, I really love how much there is to do and explore, like I said earlier, whether it's different outdoor areas to check out or historic areas to look about. So all of us um, are admissions counselors for New Jersey. So we all review for students uh, who live in New Jersey. So all of our information is posted on this slide here. Email is the best route to go because most of us work from home. Um, so if you want to shoot us an email, we're all available to assist you in the application process. Um, we also put our links um, for our visit opportunities as well. Um, so some campuses have visit opportunities. So if you do want to visit campus, be sure to visit all of our websites um, to get that information. Um, at this time, I'm going to open it up to any questions you have. Feel free to um, ask those in the uh, Q&A section, uh, section of uh, strategy, uh, Zoom. Wow. <laughs> While we're waiting for some questions, I do want to, you know, address the elephant in the room that a lot of seniors especially are thinking about this year. Are we test optional? I know UMBC is, and I think we all are on the on this panel, right? That is a beautiful thing. So if you haven't, if you're a senior and you haven't yet taken the SAT or ACT, that's okay. We can review without them. So just get those questions flowing. Just know that our applications all are test optional. So I know we got one question, um, what is the probability for internships or the comparative or is there an opportunity for everyone? Um, I can answer for, for Salisbury, most majors require an internship to graduate and I'm sure for my colleagues, they can say the same thing for their schools as well. And all of our majors also offer some sort of internship component. So if you wanna have an optional internship, I definitely recommend you do that as well. Um, career services, all of us have a career service office on, um, on campus and we have databases of internships, opportunities you can apply for. And I'll let my colleagues speak for their schools as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think something else that's really important to note is it kind of depends on what area of study you're going into and where you're located. There are some you know, research opportunities in the city of Baltimore that you might wanna get involved in, or if you're closer to Annapolis and wanna work for the state government, there, depending on where you are and where you're trying to go, it definitely can be more competitive for different majors. However, one piece of advice that I would love to give is that if you're looking to have a job or an internship while you're studying, I definitely recommend starting to make connections sooner rather than later. So even though you might not have an internship until your sophomore, junior, senior year, in your freshman year, you can start brainstorming what kinds of internships you might be interested in. You can go out to career fairs, which we all have on our campuses and are holding them virtually as well, and start just talking with different employers and companies so that your name and your face is known to them and they know that you're interested, whether it be that year or pre the following year in the future. So it's never too early to start building relationships. Yeah, I would definitely echo what um, Colin and Rachel have both said about opportunities. Um, at Stevenson, like I said before, we require it of every student to either do an internship or do some sort of research project. Um, but oftentimes students, since we're 
we're getting them in their field so early, they're able to complete multiple different experiences. Um, and then like um, everyone else has said, we have our career connection office um, where students are able to get help with their resume, um, do mock interviews, things like that, really making sure that they're prepared for whatever it is that they want to pursue. Um, and we also have our own online database of different opportunities, um, which students at Stevenson have lifelong access to. So it doesn't end after they've graduated. They get to keep those connections um, as like, you know, fresh out of the undergrad experience and even later on to help out, you know, younger students who have graduated from Stevenson. Um, so there really is an opportunity for everyone and it is really important to make those connections early on. Um, all of our departments have internship coordinators um, voicing what you're interested in doing, I think, is also a really valuable piece of advice. Um, so, for example, we had a marketing student who really wanted to work for the Walt Disney Company, and we had never sent a student to, like, one of their corporate offices before, um, but that student was able to network with alumni and is actually able to complete her internship there now. Um, so, it is really important to, again, make those connections um, and put yourself out there, and don't be afraid to put yourself out there. And just to piggyback um, off of what everyone else said, at Towson, not all of our majors require internships, but I definitely encourage you to do so just because you can get that out of the classroom experience. Because of where all of our campuses are located, there are a lot of opportunities for you to explore different internship opportunities. So if for some reason a company is only looking for one intern, there are other companies that you can look for to still get that experience. What other questions do you guys have? No question is off limits. Yes, we need at least one letter of recommendation to complete your application. Um, at Towson, we don't require letters of recommendation, but you are able to submit up to two letters of recommendation if you want to strengthen your application. I will piggyback off of that because we have the same requirement there. They're actually not required, but we will accept up to two as well at UMBC. And for us, it doesn't have to be from anyone specifically. It can literally be anyone outside of your family. So teacher, mentor, guidance counselor, coach, anyone who can really speak highly to your work ethic and integrity is who we would love to see letters from. And it is also optional to submit a rec letter at Stevenson. Um, we will take up to three and it can be um, pretty much from anyone. I would echo what Rachel said, someone who can speak to your work ethic and who you are. Yes, so we have a Bachelor's of Art and a Bachelor's of Fine Art. Uh, the Fine Art degree has different tracks like graphic design. We even have hot glass blowing as a uh, track in the Fine Art program. Very cool. It's very awesome, actually. Um, so we do have great Fine Art programs on, on campus. And we, for the art students, they do have to submit a portfolio of 10 examples of their work to be considered for the um, Fine Art program. Towson University also has um, art majors. Under our art and design major, there are different concentrations and tracks. One interesting one is the ceramic track. So that's something that students may be interested in. And like Colin said, we also have fine art. So art, so um, acting, music, and dance as well. Yes, UMBC also does have various art majors. So when it comes to visual arts, we do have our visual arts major, which offers a BA, so a Bachelor of Arts, and a BFA, Bachelor of Fine Arts. Um, and they have concentrations such as animation, graphic design, um, and various other concentrations. But fun fact, we actually have had some students who have gone on to work for Disney's animation programs who are in our visual arts department. So very excited about that. And then we also do have some performing arts majors as well with the BA and the BFA, such as theater, music performance, and music technology, and um, dance as well. And we have a few um, different art majors at Stevenson. We have graphic design, fashion design, film and moving image, and then we have theater and media performance. Um, so our students who are interested in those, um, can pursue those as majors, and then they're also able to apply for our various um, visual arts or um, theater scholarships.
What other questions? So maybe this will stem a couple more questions. If we each take a couple minutes to talk a little bit about our residential life. So living on campus, a lot of students from New Jersey, it's a little bit of a drive. So I could imagine that a lot of students might want to consider living on campus. So I can start off with that. At UMBC, we do have several residential halls and several on-campus apartments. So we do guarantee housing all four years. Um, so usually our students will start off in the typical residential halls, which is quad style, where you're, you're living with one other student next door. You have two quad mates in one room and those two rooms are connected by a bathroom. And then you can move up into the apartment buildings as well throughout your time at UMBC. At Salisbury, uh, we also have two different types of housing for incoming freshmen, suite style, which is the same as Rachel said, Jack and Jill style. Um, we also have what's called cluster style housing. Cluster style housing is a bigger suite. So you have five rooms of two people each connected to one bathroom. So it's not quite communal. So you only share your bathroom with those five rooms um, and housekeeping does clean all the bathrooms and all the common areas multiple days a week and all the residents are heated, uh, heated and air conditioned as well. And um, on this question, we do have political science. Um, I can let the other uh, schools an answer that as well. Um, so at Stevenson, we also have suite style housing for incoming students. Um, we are able to, in the past couple of years, we've been able to offer singles to freshmen on a space available basis. So if you would like to have a single room, um, you can request that when you're filling out the residential profile. Um, and then in terms of political science, we don't offer a political science major, but we have um, like related sort of fields. Um, so you can check those out on our website. Um, I believe we do have political science. I can't remember off the top of my head, but at Towson, we have different um, residential halls that are available for students. As an incoming freshman, you'll stay in one of our residential halls. They can be suite style, hotel style. It kind of just depends on which type of room you are in. And housing is randomly assigned. Once you become an upperclassman, you are able to live in one of our on-campus apartments if you're eligible for housing. Um, but housing is not guaranteed for all four years, only the first two. And to answer that political science question, UMBC does offer political science at UMBC, and believe it or not, there are tons of research opportunities within political science. Um, I actually had a friend who studied or compared the different government systems of a country in Africa compared to the, our country in America. And so they did a bunch of research on that and were able to even travel to Africa for it. So that is really incredible. But not only that, um, being so close to DC and Annapolis, there's some really good internship and job opportunities for our political science majors. So definitely a great option at UMBC. And then we're gonna go ahead and lead into that next question about tuition. So. At UMBC, out-of-state tuition is about $26,000 a year, and if you choose to live on campus, which most students from New Jersey do, um, that's about another $12,000 per year for room and board. So in total, with tuition and living on campus, after fees, it's a little bit over $40,000 a year. At Salisbury, our tuition with room and board is around $33,000 a year for out-of-staters. Um, for being from New Jersey, students automatically receive what's called the Good Neighbor Scholarship of $6,000 a year off the out state tuition, and that's good for all four years. So it does make the cost more in line with some of the state schools in uh, New Jersey. So Stevenson, since we're private, we cost the same in and out of state. Um, total cost, sticker cost, is just over $50,000 a year. However, our average cost after um, financial aid and scholarships is roughly um, $27,000, $28,000 a year. That's why it's super important to be aware of all the different scholarships that you can apply for, both 
from Stevenson um, and then from different organizations, we have automatic consideration scholarships and then a few others that require separate applications. And our tuition and fees and housing and uh, meal plan um, are around $35,000. We have just about 10 more minutes for questions. So if anybody has any pressing questions for any of us, we're definitely happy to answer them. So feel free to use that Q&A feature. All right, I pop back in. Uh, I don't want to cut anyone off short, but if there's no more questions, I don't want to keep our panelists who have, you know, given their time to us. Um, we are very grateful for the attendees that came today. We are extremely grateful for our Maryland colleges that came and shared so much with us. I know I learned a lot to take back to my students. I didn't introduce myself. I am Dana Lambert. I am a counselor at West Milford Township High School. So I am very glad that I sat through the presentation. Some housekeeping items. Again, the sessions are recorded, so you can come back to the session. If you have a friend looking for a Maryland school or you know someone else, please feel free to encourage them to watch the recording as well. And please register for additional sessions. If there are no more last questions. I'll give it one more chance. I don't want to take away anybody's time. Okay, and you have all the presenter information. That's what email is good for, as is the phone. All of these. Oh, I see. Of course, we have a question. Oh, we have a thank you. Well, we thank you too. We appreciate that. So thank you, everybody. I will end the session now. I really appreciate all of you from coming to attend and I really appreciate the presenters time and JACAC and StriveScan are glad for this week. Thank you. Goodbye.